<laughs> Thank you very much. That's very nice. Thank you, uh, Marianne, for that very nice introduction. Um, okay, so it's all about video today. So I've, I've essentially called it Essential Video for LinkedIn Success. Okay, so what I want to do is I just want to go through and cover the types of videos that you can use in LinkedIn. You've got your profile video, which essentially should be a professionally produced video. This is probably the only one that I would suggest that if you're going to get something professionally produced for LinkedIn, then maybe this is the one to start with. You use it to get found and stand out. Um, people buy from people, we all know that. So if you can get your face and get your voice in front of them when they've checked out your profile, that's what it's all about. It's no like in trusting, building relationships, and it's a professional introduction. And it's the same introduction every time, okay? Um, some just little information bits about it. Sec it goes from three seconds to five minutes, uh, 10 minutes, sorry. Maximum file size is five gigs. Now, it, you do have both hor um, orientations, which is horizontal and vertical, but in the, in the feed, um, vertical videos get cropped to square. Just be aware of that. And look, resolution in multiple formats. So it can go anything which is true 4K, but you know, that's high-end cameras. Yes, David. Is this the same as a showreel? Uh, no, a showreel would be about the results that you get for your clients. This is about you and your why, essentially. Why are you doing what you're doing? So when you film, just in general, just mm -hmm. landscape, is it cropped? Um, well, for this, I would say landscape, yes, because it's going to be hosted on YouTube yep. and linked and embedded in your profile. Joe's going to kick my butt, but the profile video, are you just talking about a profile video that you put into, like, the about section around there? Correct. Specific? No, 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 yeah. So not the cover story, it's the other? Correct. The other video of yeah, so cover story is completely different. I'll cover that a little bit later. All right. I was like, is there a specific thing I should be aware of? No, no. You got a question? Yeah, I was going to say, if you're not posting it on YouTube, are you not better to do it as vertical? Because people are lazy and only look at it in a vertical format these days? If they don't. Well, if you use, look, I'm going to be honest with you, I would say no. Mainly because, um, as I said, um, vertical video, horizontal video, no, vertical video gets cropped to square. Okay, so it's not going to look the best. You're going to have black bars and black space around it. So you're going to have it on your YouTube channel, which is horizontal, and you're going to upload it to either you're going to upload it or you're going to embed it in your LinkedIn profile, which again is horizontal. So when they go to view it, it'll be horizontal. Yeah. Okay. Um, cover video, which we just a brand new feature. I only just updated my um, app, so I now have it, which I'll be looking into. So this is your personal. DIY introduction. So if you notice Joe's, it's essentially just pictures about her, as she mentioned, pictures about who's behind the profile image. So it's an opportunity just to be a bit more personable, a bit more human. Um, if you can think about the person behind the brand or the business, that's how you should approach the content, the pictures or the videos that you want to use. And it should complement your professional approach. Because as I said before, we all know we all buy from people we know, like and trust. And this is another way to get past that professional barrier and actually be a little bit more uh, personable. So, 20 seconds long, it does have audio, but probably not a good idea to be using it. Um, if you want to speak, by all means you can, but definitely have captions, just in case someone wants to view it without. And it is 9 by 16, so it is a vertical video. So, Rich, what does native video mean? Native audio mean? Um, oh, it's so, native is probably a little bit misleading there. Essentially, it, it can have audio if you want. So when you upload it, it will play audio. Okay, so now we've got post videos. So this is where you can do, you know, work, having worked in TV and all the rest of it, it's called like a piece to camera. So essentially you're gonna set up and you're gonna deliver some content to camera, all right? So I'm gonna talk about framing and all the rest of it, but you're gonna be sitting smack bang center in the middle of that screen and you're gonna be looking at the camera because that camera is a person. It's your ideal client, it's the person you want to speak to. So that's how you're going to um, position yourself. For content ideas, look, there's lots of ways to find content. You know, there's, um, you can go on websites and add questions and they'll put in your niche and they'll just give you 100 questions about your, about your niche that you can go and answer <coughs> in videos. Be consistent. That's pretty much the key for any video strategy. Um, and DIY is perfectly acceptable. People aren't expecting professional videos on the post, although you can, but from that give to get attitude, it's not necessary. Essentially the same 
formats, time restrictions as the profile video. Okay. Now, live video. <clears throat> I was something I was quite excited about when, live, uh, when LinkedIn mentioned they're going to get live. I've applied, I still don't get it. Um, but it's only available to a select few people, isn't that right, Joe? Yes, I apply to select few. Uh, so there's no limit on the duration. A live video can go as long as you like. Um, if you are in creator mode, your profile, someone comes across your profile, you're actually going live at that particular time, your profile will have a little circle around it, not the orange one, it might glimmer or something, it tells you that you are live, so people can actually follow your content. It's a great way to build your audience, it's a one-to-many, but you must broadcast through third-party software. I'm just going to add on that, when you are live as well, the video plays on the background image of your profile. So not only does it oh. go to the feed, it's actually there. Takes over. Okay, I didn't know that. That's good to know. And where do we find out if we have that? We won't have it. It's application. You've got to apply for it. And I had to apply about six times. Um, yeah. So basically, none of us have got a ghost. What a chance. Uh, if you're there on LCS. Oh. Oh. Could we go back? It's gone. Yeah. Yeah, no. Look, you can apply. They just want to see that you've got some. They're not going to give it to everybody. They want to know that you're going to be doing it and doing it on a regular basis. So if you can prove to them that you will do it to a set. Pardon? That's your worthy. Yeah, we're not worthy, but if you are. We can share a link. Yeah, share a link. Give it a go. Yeah. Is it not something you would do, though, if you're comfortable with doing video? Oh yes, this is not, I wouldn't, it's not the first thing. no, not, not by any stretch, exactly. yeah, yeah, no, this is, season hand. Season hand. Okay. You know, I just want to add something, um, unlike Facebook and other platforms, you can't live stream directly through the platform either, you have to buy some software, so it's a little bit more, I mean there is a free version, but it's a bit more convoluted, Where is this? this is live, the last one. online video, mm -hmm. yeah, so you third party software. So there's uh, StreamYard, that's what you use, isn't it? Yeah, StreamYard. StreamYard, um, OBS, Ecamm, Restreams, lots of them. Oh, lots of them out there. Um, yeah, I was quite excited by it because I've, I've directed live telly before, so I thought this would be great, but yeah. Not for me, unfortunately. Um, okay, we have stories. Let's move on. Okay, no, I'm... <laughs> Who likes stories? I'm going to be an old fuddy daddy here. Who likes stories? Yeah, excellent. Why do you like them? Convince me. Why? Sorry. Why do you like them? I like stories because they don't last very long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, I like stories because they're an easy way to convey things that I wouldn't usually be able to put feet on my feed, yeah. but it makes it personable to talk to my audience. Okay. Yep. So I like them because they're really big and I can see them. It's the easiest way to sell a product or service. Okay. So behind the scenes, it's like the raw actuals versus yeah. security. Okay, who, who, watch, who consumes stories? All the time. Yep. So, the, so the people that make them consume them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I make more than I You consume, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, I'm just illustrating there. I think if people consume them and people are good at it, then by all means. I'm not convinced by it, and I'm, as I said, I'm an old fuddy daddy. I'm not a fan of the, story, uh, the cover story either. I think the cover story is a bit of a waste. Can I just ask to clarify, the people that said they watch stories, are you talking about, do you watch them on LinkedIn or are you talking no, about Instagram? Okay, so who watches stories on LinkedIn? Because no, I yeah. certainly don't. Oh, that's sorry. <laughs> Did I mention Instagram? No. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up, people. <laughs> sorry? Yeah, no, that's fair enough, that's fair enough. Okay. I'll just share something quickly. I mean, I've got 26,000 followers on LinkedIn, and when I share Whoa. stories, I get 20 people seeing them. So the percentage is not worth my effort. If I'm but it's because people are not used to. I don't think I've done no. it. Whereas for me, Instagram is worth it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So I keep your stories to Instagram. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is how LinkedIn describes stories. It's an easy way to share your experiences and insights and to build meaningful relationships with your professional community. Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> You're not saying this. Are you using LinkedIn stories well? Okay, who's using, who's doing LinkedIn stories well? Like who's the stop? Who's the, the brand? I do my okay. first one today. <laughs> <laughs> <Awesome>. Here. <laughs> so how do you use, would you get? 
I'm kind of like agreeing with Reg, because I find stories really, even with Instagram, I, I find them really difficult, but I can't imagine them on LinkedIn, and I've never come across like an expert who's, who I, name somebody that I know, Joe. Oh, in someone who's space. an influencer. Vanishak um, or you know who's using them well? All the LinkedIn trainers. So I don't because it's, it's not worth my. They're, okay. they're all marketing people. I agree. <coughs> I was going to say Vanishak. So if no one mm. knows about it, then no one checks it out. Oh, that's true. Yeah. And they're mobile only. You can only see yep. them on mobile. You can only create them on mobile. And once you've got to know where to look, there's no. And once the 24 hours end, the stats go with it. So you can never check how successful something was after it's finished. Where's the time? Thank, Thank you. I'm going to start a club, I think. Now, you cannot use the same features that you have on Instagram and Facebook, that you put music, that you put hashtag, that you can put everything. Then it's just that you write something and that's it. It's very boring. Mm. Yep. I'll link, I'll link in has stickers. Reg loves stickers. <laughs> Oh, I think you've spent enough, Joe. <laughs> stickers. I, I, I have used stickers only because they're there, and it does help with your SEO, I'm told, but I haven't used many. Um, look, I, I think it's just a case of LinkedIn trying to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah. That's essentially what it is. You know, you, you've, yeah. You know, you've got, to, you've got to work out for yourself if it's worth your effort and you're gonna get, you know, get any results or any subtraction from it at all. Okay, so what I wanna do, I wanna concentrate basically on post videos, okay? So the more traditional vertical videos. So we're gonna go through some, um, some hints and tips of what you need to do. But first of all, you have to work out what your content is, okay? What is the purpose of your video? Is it just to educate? Is it to be front of mind? What is it? Okay, once you're clear with your purpose, then you can go ahead and write your script, okay? Now it's probably not a bad idea to at least map out what you're gonna be saying, uh, whether you write it all out in full, whether it's dot points, entirely up to yourself, but be clear on what you wanna say, because you may only wanna keep it to 60 seconds, 90 seconds, whatever it is. So if it's 60 seconds, you've got about 180 words, roughly, uh, to get your point across. So you have to make a decision. Do you memorize? Do you read? Do you fly with the seat of your pants? It's entirely up to yourself, whatever works best for you. All right? So you've got your script. Now you've got to think, do I need any extra footage? Okay? So you might be talking about a process. You might be talking about a feature of a product. Can you go to the web page? Can you get a screen record of that and then overlay it over the top of your talking? Okay, that is gonna add an element of interest. And again, it adds, you know, you've got the educational, the visual element as well. So that's what makes videos interesting, is not just having a wide shot and then just talking for a minute and a half. Okay, and I'll, I'm gonna go into that a bit later. Right, the 80-20 rule. Video is 80-20, right? It's 80% prep, 20% production, okay? I know you might think it's the other way around, and it might be at the beginning, once you to get your head around the actual process, but once you've got your head around the process, it really should be mostly prep, and then it's like, right, press record, put the camera there, let's go. In an ideal world, in an ideal world. Um, okay, so let's talk about camera operation, okay? So we are gonna be using your, I'm assuming you're gonna be using your phone, it's gonna be horizontal, okay? Do you use your own phone? So I'm gonna call it the native uh, camera app on your phone, or do you invest money in buying <coughs> a third party one? The honest answer is it's entirely up to yourself. If you're just starting and learning out, use what you've got, don't start buying stuff until you're competent, or you get to the point where you think, actually, I need more depth of field here, I need to get more control over this camera, then you can look at buying an app, okay? Again, auto or manual, if you're just starting out, stick with auto. It will give you a good enough picture. The camera these days are just, they're just phenomenal, what they can do. Um, put it on flight mode so your Tinder's not going off, okay? You know who you are. Um, wipe the lens, okay? You're fondling that camera all the time. It's probably got some gr Fondling, I like that word. Oh, too close, okay. 
Um, yeah, so just wipe the lens. Even if it's just a t-shirt, do something. Okay, get that... Um, okay, moving on. <laughs> Storage space. What are you like, you people? I'm leaving that one alone. Uh, storage space, yeah? Don't start recording a video and then 10 seconds in it stops because you've got no space on your phone, all right? That's happened, not just on phones, on proper cameras as well. Digital zoom, so when you pinch and zoom in on the screen, that's called a digital zoom. So what you're doing is you're zooming in on the pixels in the image, you're not actually moving any glass in regards to like a lens, right? So the object then is to move your camera closer to your subject because you're gonna get a better quality picture than just zooming in, okay? <sighs> Blair Witch Project. Remember that video, that movie? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Use a tripod, people, <laughs> you know? Two things you need to buy. One's a microphone. Right, the other one's a tripod. You can get away without a tripod if you balance it somewhere. You can blue tack it to a wall, whatever. Use a bookcase, whatever you need to do. But it has to be steady, and you have to have a microphone, but I'll cover microphones a bit later. Use a plug-in microphone, okay? Question? Yes, I have a question. Go for it. How do you feel but look this. about professionals <laughs> creating videos while they are walking or doing an activity? Or driving? With the sun, with the sun. Because if it's, it's, I can't handle that. I cannot focus on what they're saying because I'm like, it's windy, I can't hear them, or if I can hear them, I still, there's so many distractions at the back, you know, dogs pooping and all sorts of things. <laughs> what kind of videos are you watching? <laughs> what, what's, the, what's the goal with that? I, am, I personally wouldn't create that type of video. Um, but I understand the sort of the reasoning behind it. It is trying to be a little bit in the moment, you know. So I'm out power walking, and I'm going to give you, you know, some three top tips or whatever. So I, I, I understand it. Um, I'd but rather do that or not, uh, rather than nothing. nothing. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Well, I, 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 Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, I'm good at that as it is, so I don't need them. And you have to be fit. Well, the thing is, it doesn't have to be... As you can tell, like, I am not shy, right? I'm also not fit. So if I was going to go out, like, say, walking on the, the beach, first of all, I'm going to trip over my two feet in the sand. If I'm trying to hold a camera and walk, I'm going to be so out of breath. I'm probably sweating and I'm going to do yeah. that to my hair the whole time. And I don't think any one of you would want to watch anything. Like, you would never think that I was... Yeah, but I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a fan. <clears throat> like, I, I like the in-the-moment idea. Does it not depend on who you're trying to appeal to? Yes. Yes. You're doing it for them and you're not doing it for yourself. Correct. So if it's an audience that you know that appreciates that, or if you're going to be doing it for yourself, then you're yeah. going to be doing it for yourself. Spurred by inspiration, give me... Anyway, even yeah. if you are out of breath and your hair's all over the place, I think that's... <laughs> yeah, but that's being that's being authentic. I think if you if you're doing it to try and pose, yeah. then that's and you know it's, it's not gonna you're not gonna endear yourself to me anyway, you know. To take, to take that down a, a bit moment further, for me it's like when I'm watching someone who I really admire um, talk to me while they're walking, and the sun is in my eyes because they're thinking about themselves and not me watching it. Yeah. You know, I'd yeah. rather they have the sun in their eyes, so at least yeah. I'm looking at them squinting instead of me looking at them, mm. you know, at the screen going, I can't think it. Yeah, absolutely. The videos are... No. Look, the, I equate video to pizza. And that probably sounds very silly, but I've never had a bad pizza. Pizzas are generally pretty good. You know, you've got, like, you've got to go out of your way to make a bad pizza. So generally, a, as you said, a video is better than no video. But it is about your audience, essentially. Um, okay, so shooting with handles. Okay, this is a big thing with, um, and I don't mean love handles. Right, what I mean is I want three seconds of footage before I start to speak. Because I get annoyed when someone starts a video like that and then ends a video like that. It's like, for God's sake, can you not hold your breath for two seconds? 
So press record, get comfortable, deep breath, smile, and then launch into your presentation. All right? Because I don't want to see up your nose or down your, down, your, down your nose where you're pressing buttons and all the rest of it. Just... Which, as a consultant, makes it much easier for me to edit those things out if you give some space. That's exactly right. Because what they've done is a press record instead of talking before they've actually got back into their... Because they've got... They've otherwise, they're going to cut the, going to cut the sound out. So you're going to miss the first three or four words. Okay? Just handles. Just handles. Shoot with handles. Get our remote control. <laughs> okay, so framing. How do you position your subjects or yourself in the frame? All right, so it's essentially six shots, but I'm going to keep it nice and simple, and you're going to have three shots to consider. All right, wide shot, mid shot, close up. Okay? Um, that's my son, that's my nephew. He's, he's 14 now, so it's a few years ago, this picture. Um, okay, when you're delivering pieces to camera, um, like a desktop, you're sitting there, you're gonna give some information away, you're probably not gonna use the close-up, let's be honest, okay? But what I wanna see is I wanna see an establishing shot, a wide shot, and then I wanna see you cut in to a mid shot, okay? So think about it as, um, okay, I've called it an establishing shot, that's a TV term or a film term. So I'll give you an example, neighbors, I, I don't watch Neighbours, but this is a good example. Um, shush, I do not. Um, when it starts, you get the, the credits, opening credits, and then you'll see a shot of Erinsborough. I do watch it. Erinsborough. No, it's not. It's Ramsey Street. Sorry. You've got a shot of Ramsey Street, that cul-de-sac, right? Then you hear a voice. Okay, so they've established where it is. It's suburban Australia. It's a normal cul-de-sac, you can hear, like a, technically it's called an L-cut because you've got your audio first, and then you cut to a kitchen and it's two people having a chat. So they've established where the action's taking place. All right, that's an establishing shot. Same as a wide shot. So when you're doing the same thing, you're not gonna start up, hi, <laughs> I'm Reg. That's, that's not how it works. Think about it as in person. When you meet someone, you, you say, hi, how you going? You lean in, you shake hands, and then when you're having that conversation, you're, you know, you're not encroaching in their personal space. It's the same thing. Start with a wide shot, and then you can cut away. So if you're in the flow of things and you're talking about something that's a bit more broad, by all means, come out to a wider shot. And it's something a bit more personal, something a bit more intimate, or a nugget of information, then you can move in. Okay, these subtle cuts, even when you're watching videos, the chances are you don't realize what's happening because you're so used to seeing it. But when it goes wrong, you notice. Okay, that's uh, the job of a good editor is not noticed. You never know because you just watch and think, oh, that was a great movie. But you don't realize what the editing behind to convey meaning and all the rest of it. Okay, so understanding framing is important. Rule of thirds. Now, rule of thirds runs both ways it runs horizontal and vertical. Okay, so we're not two year olds at kindergarten, we don't draw. This is the ground, you know, this is red, and there's a house with a triangular roof, and there's a sun at the top. We're a bit more sophisticated than that, you know? We're working with the flat plane here on a video, okay? So you need to do things to try and add depth, right? If you're doing a, if you want to go and take a great picture of a sunset, then maybe you'd use that type of framing. You know, you could use that as a leading line to lead the eye. Again, if you're outside and you just want to incorporate, you could be out doing a walk and you want to show the, show the, um, the garden or show the, the park, whatever. Being sophisticated and not so basic. All these little elements all add up to having a more professional looking video. Okay, so these intersecting lines are called PowerPoints. So if you're interviewing someone else or someone else is talking about your business, you're not gonna have them plonk right in the middle where you would sit because I'm talking directly to the person, the camera. Okay, this person's being interviewed. So where do you think the person who's asking the questions would be sitting? On this side or on this side? So if, on this side here, why do you think that? Exactly, he's, he's got an area to talk into, yeah, which 
even though you can't see it, you then know that that person's off camera and that's the eye line that, they're, that he's looking at and he's talking into that space. If he was to look this way and answer questions, what would your mind do? What you looking at, buddy? I'm over here. So you've, by breaking a convention, you're distracting the audience. And you, know, you may not even realize you're doing it, but that's the kind of thing that can happen. You don't want to distract your audience with bad audio, bad framing, because I'm the world's worst. I look at everything and I'm thinking, oh, why is that sitting there? And I'm, I've lost it. I'm not listening to what the person's, why is that lambda on in the background? Or why is he sitting a little off center? Or, so you don't want people questioning what you're doing on, on, on screen, because then you've lost, the, they haven't, they're losing the message. Oh dear, I'm, I'm your video assistant, right? You're going to be really analysing this footage, aren't you? You bet. <laughs> I'm going to get a written report at the end. So you get centred or go off centred? If you're delivering yourself, delivering some information to camera, sit centre. Yeah. If, you're got, if you're interviewing someone, have them sitting off of centre, okay? And if you've got, so for example, You've organized a networking event with some of your clients and you're thinking, right, I'm gonna sneak in some testimonial videos. One person, you're gonna get them to sit on this side and the other person on that side. So when you cut the videos together, they're on opposite sides. Otherwise, they're all gonna be on the same side and they'll just look a bit odd, okay? But having the power, so these PowerPoints are important because that's where the eye goes. So if you can get someone's face roughly in that position where the PowerPoint is, then it's not a distraction. Dave? Yeah. Which was perhaps <laughs> <laughs> maybe he did, maybe he was told the right thing, he just did the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, quite possible. And cameramen of the world's worst. The amount of times they're just they're so clever. There was um I saw it, it was British uh, politics. There was a sign behind the guy's head, the politician, and the cameraman just basically just scooched to the left <laughs> so the C was visible, and the N and the T was visible, and the T, R, Y, whatever it was, was kind of... So he's, you know what I mean? It's subtle, but that tells you a lot, doesn't it? Well, it's subtle because the person who's on camera doesn't know what's going on, but everybody else knows what's going on. Okay, so headroom is important as well. You don't want to give too much headroom because otherwise people think you're standing in a ditch and then you don't want to cut the top of a head off because that just looks odd, okay? So essentially looking about three fingers, not, not too much. Nothing is distracting essentially. Okay, and this is what we were saying about before about um, having that area to talk into. So this is a frame you're gonna see in the video. So he's sitting left to frame on that left third, talking into the gap that's on the right. And as you can see, this shadow here is the, the director or the person asking the questions. So that's the eye line. So that's, a, that's just a normal television, TV video convention, right? News is a little bit different. Um, okay, sorry, I'll keep that there. So what do you notice about news interviews? Does anything stand out? They're looking straight into the camera. So the camera is always eye level at the person who's being interviewed. So if you go past the Supreme Court after a big case, a couple of my mates are cameramen, one's about the same height as me, the other guy's about five and a half foot. So it doesn't matter what height he is, it's the eye level of the camera because the level of the camera denotes meaning. So I'm standing and looking down, Right, this is the, I'm the camera, that's the viewer. Oh, thanks. What, what does that mean? So if, I'm, if someone's looking down, if I'm looking up at someone, what position am I in? Subservient, Subservient position. You don't want your viewer or the person on, on camera to be in a dominant or a subservient position. So that's why eye line or eye level is important. Right, okay, sound. Now I did say about buying a microphone, right? It's not even, don't even come and ask me, do I need a microphone? The answer is yes. Okay, you don't have to spend a lot of money because under, under $100 you can get a decent microphone. Okay, so there's really no excuse. People will not watch your video if they cannot hear it. If they can hear it and there's bad vision, like remember the old days of television, you'd be banging the side of the television hoping the picture gets better. You're gonna hang around because you know the picture's gonna get better. With the sound, you can't follow what's going on, you're gonna give up a lot easier. 
So sound is important, okay? If you're using your phone, essentially you've got two variations you can use for a microphone. There's a lapel and there's a directional. Okay, I'm wearing a lapel at the moment. So it just sits here, so it's a wireless lapel, which you can get. Um, I probably should try and get some deal with Rode because I cock about them all the time. Um, so, I need to update. Joe has the Rode Wireless Go, which is a tremendous. I've just got a wired one, which I use. Um, okay, I've started doing TikToks. So I use this for TikToks. That's the guy who was sitting there, Seva, he's a, he's a huge TikToker. When he walked in the room, I knew who he was just through TikTok, not because I met him before. Um, so anyway, you need to have a microphone, right? A wired lapel, this was less than $80. It's Probably the length of the cable is about that long, you can get longer ones. If you're willing to spend a little bit more money, you can get ones where it's wireless and you can get two microphones and one receiver. So then you can plug in two wireless microphones and you can stand on camera and interview someone and you'll get two microphones going back to your, your camera, okay? So that is a lapel microphone. Usually sits around the second button of your blouse or shirt. Try and hide the wires. Um, Back when, when I worked in telly, television was okay to have microphones because people expect to have microphones. People don't care. There's no such thing as trying to hide a microphone nowadays. I was, oh, speaking of microphone, I forgot my fake one. I was going to bring it. I forgot it. Um, uh, yeah, I'll save it for the quiz night. Okay, so this is a directional microphone. Okay, so this plugs directly into your phone. Um, I need to get an adapter because I've got a different phone now. Um, so this has a pickup pattern of essentially, it doesn't pick up from behind, but the pattern sort of comes out wide and then gets narrow. So you've only got about a six foot gap between your phone and the subject before you start losing quality of your uh, audio. Six foot, what's that? 1.8 meters. And I've got to add, um don't knock your tripod when you've got that hooked onto your phone um, because when the tripod falls over and the phone is still attached to the tripod, um, yeah. guess what stays in the phone? There's like two pieces after that. Yeah. Oh. Yes, I did that on Friday night actually. Oh, did you? Yes, my big fat bum got in the way oh, and dear. knocked over the tripod in the middle of a self-test and just snapped oh. it in two. That's not good. But they're fabulous. Yeah. They're fabulous. Okay, so both of these microphones are Rode, which is an Australian brand, so I, I encourage you to buy Rode. They're really good. Um, I've also got another uh, podcasting mic that sits on my desktop. I love it. I think, it's, I think they're great. Where would you, get, where would you get them from? Right? Um, online or I bought mine from that electrical shop. What's it called? JB Hi-Fi. I was going to yep. say, there's also camera electronics. I should put together yeah, camera electron, but JB Hi Fi, 80, I think 80 bucks. You know? Cosmic Sound Yep, Cosmic Sound. Anyone a discount if you ask? Yes, probably. Up to 20%. Yeah, there we go. Cosmic and Sound Center. Yeah, so I think Selby Street, isn't it? Cosby? Cosmic? Cosmic. Cosmic. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's just like a little um, desktop tripod you can use. Make sure your phone fits in it before you go buying an adapter. Okay? Dead cat, that's what we call it, dead cat. All right, a windshield if you want to be technical, yeah? Always have it on. And I'll tell you why, if you're in a room like this where there's no soft furnishings, and then you record, you're gonna get a little bit of reverb because the sound's gonna come off, out of your mouth, bounce off the wall and come back and it's gonna pick up on the side. So by having your dead cat on, you're just gonna eliminate that reverb. So you're gonna have even crisp, crisper, clean sound, okay? Um, just... <laughs> oh, do I? Any cat lovers here? Yes. 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 Um, okay, so one of the things you need to consider as well is extraneous noise. Okay, so traffic, yes. If, you, if, you're, if you're making sure that cat's definitely dead, then maybe do it outside. Um, traffic noise, yeah, you could probably get away with hums are what you really want to be wary of, okay? Hums. So electric lighting, air conditioners, fridges. Annoying husbands. Annoying husbands. 
I don't have one of those, but that's possible. Live cats. Live cats, yeah, Live pets, cats. you know. Um, the amount of times I've gone to repress record and the next door neighbour's got a jackhammer going, or the guy across the street gets his buzzsaw out, or, like you know. Dogs, dogs on floors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so just be aware, because otherwise it's going to be uh, a distraction, essentially. Okay, we're getting near the end of, hang on, maybe I need to. All right, lighting, stop enjoying yourself. What are you doing? Uh, it's, right it's really funny. It says, it says, directional light should be out of shot, but directed towards the mouth of the talent. Yeah, yeah. what's? That's funny. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what it means, though? Yeah? No. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, it's the mouth of the well, you know. <laughs> well, you're not going to aim it at the belly button, are you? Well. <laughs> oh, is it, is it, oh, I'm being polite. I could have said you or... No worries. Um, it's very good, Rich. Don't worry about this. Yeah. Sorry, I thought it was good. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Well, hey. Be nice. What's going on? All right, so lighting. This is a question I get asked probably, other than what camera should I use, this is probably yeah, the most common question. Right, lighting is a serious skill if you want to do it properly, right? It's three-point lighting. You have to know about key lights, fill lights, backlights. As soon as you put two lights together, you're going to cause a shadow. It's a nightmare, OK? As a professional person who makes videos, I do take a lot of time with lights when I'm doing interviews and stuff like that because it, it does make a big difference. But you don't have the time and you won't have the inclination because I know I sure as hell I don't when I'm doing short videos, right? So your saving grace is natural light, okay? Big picture windows, go stand in front of the window, put your tripod and your microphone right there and then talk away. That way you're going to get nice even lights and your colours are going to be natural, okay? So there we go, stand in front of a light. If you're shooting outdoors, avoid midday because you're going to get those very harsh shadows. Avoid doing it under trees and stuff because if you get a little bit of a breeze, you're going to get the dappled light, which could be distracting. You're looking for shaded areas because when it comes to lighting, you want control, okay? Because there's a lot of times you're outside, you've got something set up and then the cloud will come over and blocks the sun and then everything dims down. You've either got to reset your stuff or you've got to wait for it to pass over. It's a, it's a nightmare, okay? So my suggestion is if you want to use lighting, use the sun, use natural lighting, okay? But if you think you desperately need a light, then go for one light and go for the light that's sitting on top of your camera. So that can be either a ring light you know, the diva, oh, let's call them diva lights, yeah? I see a few divas in here. Um, so a ring light, or uh, this one. So this is essentially just an on-camera light. It sits on the shoe, on the top of your camera, just like a normal flash. And then, wow. so that's, so it's actually dimmable as well. And it, I bought this online, I think it was 110 bucks. Um, it's just called a, a it's just an, uh, it, it's a, the brand is Genari, G-E-N-A-R-A-Y. Um, it can be powered by mains and it's color temperature. So it goes from white to orange, if you notice, okay? So I didn't, I didn't mention, um, I didn't go into this for the, the lighting because... You can use it on an iPhone, can you? It won't sit on an iPhone, but you can use it because you can put it on a tripod or something, yeah, and use it that way. Um, G-E-N-E-R-A-Y. Genare, Genare. G-E-N-E-R-A-Y. G-O-G-G-O. That's, that's going back a bit, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, yes. Yep. Uh, you, and your glasses. Well, you can get certain sprays that you can put on. Um, well, yeah, blackout. But that, you know, you can't see. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, you can get anti-reflective spray. But essentially, you're not going to get rid of it in your eyes. You know, unless you've got put spray in your eyes, <laughs> which I wouldn't recommend. So it's not. Oh, sorry, I was going to say that Pete had a really good tip. Pete, photo. Watch your glasses tip for the 
Oh, tip, 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 tip the someone. Tip them like that. Oh, tip. So if you just like, you like. Oh my god. Yep, there we go. Top tip right there. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Um, yes, David. I spent four years at the ABC and our tip there was you simply put a lackey band around glasses and it does exactly what you yeah, it it So just so it's, so it's angling the glass. Yeah. Yeah. So that I'm straight Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a great tip. I don't I don't well I I need them but I don't wear them. Yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> like a no, not no, like a band aid. Yeah. Not a, I was, when you said band aid, I was thinking of elastic band. No. Oh, a lucky band. It's not not a band aid. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. No. Okay. No. Would never do that. Um. Yes. Yeah, so I, that camera, oh, that light has two different. Oh. Two different yeah. coloured temperatures. It's still on. I've got to turn it off. Because um, you don't want to mix lights, essentially. Oh, why don't you Rich? That's all right. Because what happens? Um, because light burns at a different temperature. So it burns at Kelvin. Okay. So around at this moment in this room here, you're looking at about 4,000 degrees Kelvin. If we were to go and get another temperature light that was a different colour, and then you've got two different colour lights, you're going to get a, a, a spill. So where those two colour lights meet blue and green, you're going to get, or blue and like a yellowy orange, you're going to get a greeny tinge. So that's why you try and stick to one, that's why I say avoid lights, because it becomes a bit technical. But that's the reason why you don't mix lights. So a tungsten light that you get on your headlamps, in your car, wouldn't work with, um, you know, the Bunnings light you get for your shed. Because it's two different colour temperatures. So that's just, again, complicating things. Um, Yep, if you want to use a desk lamp, maybe perhaps at the back of the shop, just for a little emphasis, then by all means. Um, but that's just more set dressing than actual lighting. Right. Let's, I think this look, I've covered this essentially um, with the positioning of the talent, okay? So you're gonna have them sitting left of center on that left um, third. You're gonna be sitting on the right, asking them questions. <coughs> if you can get a second shot, Absolutely great idea. So you're gonna have a wider shot and then a tighter shot. So when they're actually giving that good information, you can cut to the tighter shot. But if you've only got the one, then by all means just stick to the one. Um, having your background out of focus, which is, anyone know what the term's called? Begins with a B. Well, that's technically how you get it, but. Blurry. Oh, oh yes, no, it's bokeh. Bokeh. That's the sort of effect everyone kind of goes for, having that um, blurry. Cost of Costa <laughs> um, Yeah, you, you can get it with your camera, with the cameras these days, um, but prime lens is a lot easier. So, Rich, if you're using two cameras, do you use a slate? Do I use a? A slate? Yeah, oh yes, definitely. Yeah, a clapper. So you can just, uh, just put your hands together and clap, so then when you get into the edit suite, you've got a, um, an audio spike, and then all you've got to do is you've got your two, clips and you drag them across so then your timeline matches up with your spike and then everything is in sync so then you can just you can watch and go right I want to go to the wide shot and you can trim go to the closer shot and trim what was that clapper, clapper. yeah it's a clapper board clapper board clapper board it's called yeah so that's just a a wooden piece of kit um, I think um, that one? Yeah. Ah, look, okay, if you're gonna get two cameras, have them on the same side, okay? The reason being, if you have a camera on either side of the interviewer and you've got them sitting off center, then what's gonna happen is the person will be talking, then the next question will be like this. So they're constantly gonna be doing this in the interview, even though they're not moving. So it's gonna, you're gonna, what the hell's going on there? So the camera's on the same side, and you cut between the two cameras, the person will be facing the same way. All right. The easiest way to explain it is if you think of an AFL football match, all the goal, all the cameras are on one side of the or the oval. Okay. So if I'm going to kick a goal this way and the camera's over there, I'm going to kick a goal. If I switch to a camera on this side, I'm not kicking a goal. I'm now kicking away from goal, which confuses the people. You think, oh, hang on, he's gone the wrong way. So it's called crossing the line. So just be aware it's got to be on the same side. I think I've spoken for too long already. 
Just some, some hints and tips for some apps. Um, I have used that one, that one, and that one, but I'm now using this one, CapCut. Little TikTok reference. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> the reason why I started using it, because it, it's an app on your phone and it does captions. Oh. Does, does captions. Huh? Yes. Yep, so that's a winner for me. Yep, you can edit and all the rest of it, yep. So that's my little tip. So you can put text on, you can add images and all the rest of it. Yes, Jen? Can I ask a question? Nope. You're really saying try and avoid the background. Yep. So a lot of people have that whatever word you yep. said. Yep, booker. Yep. yep. How do you do that on your phone where you can't do it on your phone? Um, you can. You portrait mode does it. Yeah, portrait mode, that's it. You've got to try and have um, your, your camera close to your subject, but then the distance to the background so it's easier. It's a lot harder when there's no, so if I'm sitting here and that's the background, it's a lot harder to get out of focus. Yeah. Yeah. So the further away you are, the better. Yeah. Okay. Um, right, activity, this is this okay? Can we go, no, yes? Yeah, we do a quick one, yeah, yeah. So what time are we supposed to finish? Eight. Eight? <laughs> well, it's not 30 minutes, we've got 30 minutes. Well, I know we haven't got 30 minutes, yeah, yeah. but. <laughs> 10 minutes. Do, do we want to go through and try some video? Yes. yes? Excellent, that's the answer I want to hear. Right, so, pair up with someone. Right.